we can use the stroke volume to calculate our cardiac output, and that's the um, known as the amount of blood, the volume of blood that is pumped to the whole body in a minute. So let's write that down. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped to the body by one ventricle in one minute. Volume from one ventricle in one minute. All right, so we can calculate the cardiac output. And so I'm going to show you my math. Cardiac output in volume over time per minute, right, is equal to stroke volume. Remember that stroke volume was volume per beat. And if you multiply your stroke volume by your heart rate, which is beats per minute, what you're going to see if you do some magical uh, dimensional analysis, what is it called? Like I call it factor labeling, but I don't know what anybody else calls it. You can cancel out your beats because if you divide beats by beats, you get one, and you end up with volume per minute, which is your units of cardiac output. The interesting thing is that under normal circumstances, your cardiac output should be the same for both ventricles. Your cardiac output, and that, doesn't that make sense that, yes, otherwise you're going to have backup of blood somewhere, and you don't have backup of blood somewhere unless you've got a problem, in which case you're going to have backup of blood somewhere. And that's something that we're going to talk about in the next lecture. We're going to explore this further when we talk about blood pressure, and then the ultimate goal of this whole thing, which is capillary exchange. All right, dog pounds. It's been real. Now, seems like this was a successful process. We'll see if it actually was successful if I try and publish this thing. If it gets published tonight, it's only 5.30 p.m. I can record like eight more lectures tonight. Let's do this. All right, goodbye now.